While America prospers, Europe goes to war in 1914 over who will control the globe and all its resources. Although sympathetic to Great Britain, President Woodrow Wilson is determined to keep the nation out of the Great War. For Wilson, social reform, what he calls the new freedom, is a more pressing goal. We have been proud of our industrial achievements, but have not hitherto stopped thoughtfully enough to count the human cost, the cost of lives snuffed out, of energies overtaxed and broken, the fearful physical and spiritual cost to the men and women and children upon whom the dead weight and burden of it all has fallen pitilessly. But World War I will not go away. Although many Americans strongly oppose intervention, in 1917, Wilson sends boys overseas to fight for the first time in a major European conflict. It will be, Wilson declares, the war to end all wars. We shall fight for the things which we have always carried nearest to our hearts, for democracy, for the right of those who submit to authority to have a voice in their own government, and the rights and liberties of small nations, and to make the world itself at last free. Yet, in the name of freedom, many Americans suddenly find their own liberty curtailed. During World War I, even though Woodrow Wilson said this was a war to make the world safe for democracy, the mobilization for the war unleashed a tremendous repression of free speech in the United States. The Sedition Act, the Espionage Act, passed by Congress, virtually made it illegal to criticize the government during World War I. And states passed laws even far more sweeping. One made it illegal to speak German anywhere, on the telephone, and in private homes. There was a kind of hysteria to create a national unity because there was a lot of opposition to the war and the government moved to try to suppress that. Well-known anti-war leaders like socialist Eugene V. Debs and political firebrand Emma Goldman are among thousands who are imprisoned during the war or deported immediately after. Yet, this blow to freedom does not go unanswered. In the early 1920s, Supreme Court Justices Holmes and Brandeis reaffirm the importance of the Bill of Rights and the need to protect freedom of speech and press for all Americans. Civil liberties as we understand them today are born in the wake of World War I. With Europe devastated, the United States emerges from the war easily the most powerful nation in the world. <laughs> 